the default password is 1234. You'll notice that the interface is mobile friendly. If you're wondering why it doesn't look like the full desktop version, stay tuned, we'll install that in just a moment. Welcome to the ultimate mobile hacking experience. In this video, we'll show you how to natively install Kali Linux on your mobile device. You'll get access to the same powerful tools you use on your desktop, like Wi-Fi, Matasplot, and hundreds more. Imagine carrying a complete hacking toolkit right in your pocket, ready for wireless attacks, network scanning, and much more all on the go. And the best part? you'll be running the native Kali Linux OS up to optimize for your device's performance. So if you're ready to turn your phone into a hacker's dream, stick around, we'll walk you through the entire process step by step. Let's get started. First, open the official Kali Linux website in your browser, navigate to the mobile section. Here you will find two versions of Kali Linux, Nethunner Lite and Nethunner Pro, and also the complete installation guide for both on them, if your device supports Nethunter Pro, I recommend using it as it offers a native Kali Linux experience. If not, you can opt for Nethunter Lite. Even if your device isn't listed for either, don't worry, you can still install Kali Linux on your phone. So for more details, check out the video by clicking the i button. Once you've chosen your device, download the appropriate package. I've already downloaded mine, but it's in an archive, so you'll need to unzip it first. After extracting, you will see a bunch of files. Don't worry, I'll explain them. Before we dive in, let me show you the device I'm using. It's a Poco F1, currently running Android 14. Now let's boot the device into fast boot mode and connect it to your computer. I'm using a Mac for this tutorial, but you can follow the same steps on Windows. You'll just need to have a DB and Fastboot tools installed. Open the terminal and we'll start by erasing the user data on the device with this command. Fastboot erase user data. Once that's done, we need to flash the Kali user data file. Type the fastboot flash user data. Then drag and drop the user data file into the terminal. You can identify it by its larger file size. It's a large file, so the process will take some time. Important, do not disconnect your phone during flashing as this could brick your device. Once the user data is flashed, we also need to flash the boot image. Type fast boot flash boot. Next, drag and drop boot image file from Kali's archive into the terminal. Make sure you select the correct boot image for your specific device. After flashing both the user data and boot image, reboot your device by typing Fastboot Reboot. It will reboot your device in Kali Linux. The first boot may take a while, but don't worry, that's normal. Once it's normal, you'll see the Kali Linux boot interface. At this point, the system is extracting the necessary firmware and drivers onto your device. I'll fast forward this part to save time. Finally, we arrive at the Kali Linux login screen. The default password is 1234. You'll notice that the interface is mobile friendly. If you're wondering why it doesn't look like the full desktop version, stay tuned, we'll install that in just a moment. Oof, friendly. If you're wondering why it doesn't look like the full desktop version, stay tuned, we'll install that in just a moment. Before proceeding, connect your device to the internet. And I'm already connected. Um, you'll also need to set your date, time, and region in the system settings, otherwise the internet connection might not work properly. Once configured, the internet should be fully functional. As you can see in this browser, it is working. After checking the internet connection, let's open the terminal and update the repositories. The great thing is that Kali Linux comes with pre-installed sudo. And the password for sudo is also 1234.
One more thing I want to show you the repo I'm using. As you can see, I'm using the official Kali repository mirrors to install the full desktop environment of Kali Linux into the command provided in the video description. It will also take some time and ask you for many prompts, choose your desired options and reboot your device. Now, as you can see, we've successfully booted into the Kali Linux desktop environment. For ease of use, I recommend connecting a mouse and keyboard as the small UI can be difficult to navigate with touch controls alone. Log in using the username Kali and the password 1234. And now we're in the full native Kali Linux desktop environment. You can install any tool in this environment and it even supports peripheral devices like dongle Wi-Fi adapter and even HDMI. As you can see, the Wi-Fi is still connected and all my browser data is intact. This means we can switch back to the mobile-friendly interface whenever needed. I'll include the command for switching back in the video description. That's it for this tutorial. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button. And if don't want native installation, check my other videos to install Kali Linux without root access.